Hi, everyone. We're just eagerly waiting. I think everyone's eagerly waiting this one. Hey! Hi! Hi. How are you? I'm great. I'm so excited to be on with you today. So am I, and so are a lot of other people by the sounds of it. The amount of messages, the amount of messages I've had and all the love on Insta as you've seen, it's been amazing. It has. It really has. Our, our Sangat is just like amazingly supportive. Isn't it? Isn't it lovely? And you know what I really like, Monica, is women supporting women. I'm loving this because at the moment it's like everybody, the women especially are out for each other. They're supporting each other. Whereas perhaps previously we haven't seen that at the moment. It's just amazing. And I'm really, really loving it. I, I feel like women in general have more empathy um, than their male counterparts because we are nurturers, right? Like, I'm not a mom, but like if I look at my mom or my grandma, um, they internally, like they just know when someone's upset, when something's needed and what's going on. And I think we're seeing a lot of that during this protest, like women are really taking the lead and it's beautiful to see. Absolutely, 100%, 100%. Firstly, welcome and thank you for taking time. What time is it there in the States? It's uh, 12 p.m. Oh, 12, okay, okay. So not too early then. No the midday okay how are you i'm great um it's been a good day it's been a good couple of weeks god's great so i'm good how are you yeah busy <laughs> very very busy we've had a hectic hectic few months as you know our team's there on the ground and we've just got a lot going on here so we've been um, super busy but yeah tired need a nice holiday but i can't see that happening anytime soon but yeah, yeah. So um, today, as I say, the response has been amazing. The messages and this link will go up on YouTube later. And I really, the reason why I invited you on to do this discussion is because you've been so active. You've been fantastic. And I think you've been an amazing role model for some of the younger girls because they're like, wow, you know, Monica Gill's out there raising the voice. And you've really amplified the voice of those people that have really, really shown integrity and stood by the cause, right? I know last, was it last week you had one of our MPs from the UK on? Yeah. So you're, you're very, very aware at the moment and you're really, you know, amplifying the message, which is fantastic. So thank you. Thank from you. everybody, I think, really. Uh, the questions are coming in thick and fast. We'll have a look at those in a minute. So really, Monica, I wanted to just, you know, the role of the Punjabi entertainment industry at the moment i've never in my lifetime seen anything like this where they've been so active they've really put themselves out there haven't they they've really been active and having a good handle on what's going on and and just really standing up for what's right i think that's amazing i mean they could teach bollywood a thing or two right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i um so i have i'm, I'm split um i do think that um, the, our, the, our, our Punjabi fraternity are doing what they can, but we also have to remember that they do live in India. Um, one of the reasons that I am able to be as vocal as I am, or I am able to do what I'm doing is because I don't live in India, right? I live in America. My entire family is here. Literally, I have nothing to be afraid of, right? If I had to worry about the safety of my family and my loved ones, um, I could be very easily silenced into submission because I'm a very, like a huge emotional fool. Like, and nobody wants to do that. Um, everybody has their careers to worry about, but I don't have to worry about that either because I've moved back. So I think what people are doing, like how much capability they have in what they're doing is great. However, um, I wish that sentiment had, um, they had stuck it through. I think, what we saw happening um, recently with um, ZTV, and I, and I know um, Uncle G spoke about it. I didn't call any, like I didn't use any names, but I think the understanding that um, how corporate houses make money and why they did what they did was necessary. Um, I think um, the Sangat was boycotting Z. Everybody had stopped watching it. I know a lot of houses here in the US that had stopped subscribing to it. So what do they do? They call they called up and you know booked someone who is very prominent in Punjabi cinema to do a show to bring the audiences back. And everybody fell into the trap. 
if we had continued to boycott, Z would have been forced to change their narrative. The way to make corporate corporations or media houses um, work the way you want to work is hurt them financially. And you hurt them financially by making sure they don't have viewership. If they don't have viewership, they don't have advertisers. And if they can't advertise, they don't make money. And if they don't make money, they have to stop. Like, and I think that simple understanding of how corporate structure works is kind of lacking. I mean, we had a prominent Punjabi figure say that ZTV and Z Punjabi are two separate entities and that understanding of corporate structure right there is lacking. I mean, I don't know if this, if, if this young lady was straight up lying or she really didn't understand, but no, that's not how corporate structure works. You have one corp company and that out of that company, you have like, you have stems that stem by whether that's Z Bengali, Z Punjabi, Z whatever. And it's very important to understand how it works. And this is, this is a very grassroots morcha. Um, grassroots means that it's, it's spread out throughout the world and we all have a role to play in it. And the sooner we understand, the better. Because it's, it's the people that are not speaking out or the people who are not participating or the people who are not even taking any action in the background that are preventing some solution of coming forward. Absolutely, absolutely. So on, on that note, because it's such a such a recent issue, I have to say historically from our dealings with the Punjabi uh, entertainment industry, there is often that lack of understanding how things work or, and there's a very much a me, me culture and there's only a few really that we've had dealings with that are genuinely 100% what they seem, right? The integrity is mm. there. Mm. I think a lot of the times we've come across people that are very, it, it, it's, about the, it's about the public image, it's about how they're going to promote themselves in the industry and the networking and the relationships. And that's why for us from the outside, it's been amazing seeing people being more vocal, seeing it through. But there, I mean, I personally, I'll tell you, I have had an experience with one of the highlighted uh, Punjabi actresses of Punjabi cinema at the moment. I called her out on a simple thing. She was pushing Christianity on her Instagram, like really, I, you know who it is, right? <laughs> By your smile. Really pushing it, really pushing it. I mean, everybody's got freedom of it, you know, t of faith and follow whichever faith you want and what have you. But she was almost like preaching it and constantly, constantly. And I just asked her a simple question. I said, in your films, you play Punjabi Sikh, you play the, you know, the role model, the, the, you make money from that image but you're very much pushing this agenda of converting people to christianity right she blocked me simple question she blocked me and to this day she's blocked me yeah so i'm not surprised by what's happened with the z news i know in canada uh, a lot of the advertising revenue was stopped because people as principals said we're not going to advertise with you i think jazzy b has pulled all his music from them so it is disappointing, but like you say, the lack of understanding is probably more so behind it, right? So I have a very biased opinion of this young lady, so I don't know if I'm the right person <laughs> to be commenting. But okay. um, my, my simple understanding of human nature is this, that if you can't belong to your religion or parents, you can't be loyal to anyone. Like, like, uh, like in my eyes, like you're born, you're born into a religion, right? Religion is taught to you the same way that the love of your parents and your family members is taught to you. Um, and if you can't belong to your religion, how do you belong to your family? And if you can't belong to your family, then how do you belong to a spouse? Right? So like that, the, there's a very warped concept of loyalty there. And um, in the, in the Punjabi film fraternity, I've had my ups and downs. And um, my opinion has basically been that it's a lot of show, right? And even it, actually my opinion of what's going on right now as well, is that everything is all for show. And um, I think had I grasped that and worked into that, I would have been a lot more successful had I been. But then again, I sleep very peacefully at night. You know, and you have a lot of respect. I, I, that, that, you know, you're saying, and I appreciate that, but like, 
when I started being involved in this, I didn't do it for respect. I do it. I did it because my grandmother and my grandmother's siblings had gone through a lot of trauma that was resurfacing. And my reason for getting involved into this was because I don't want my grandma dying without, without healing open wounds, basically. You know, that was my reasoning. And, you know, I did it out of love for her. And then whatever stemmed out, stemmed out. I think your passion shows. Your passion and your emotion that's driving you, I think it shows. And that, you can't manufacture that. You can't fake that. So, you know, I, I think we'll leave it there. I'm getting name and shame. Tell us who it is. We're not going to do that. That's not what we're about. But hopefully one day, like they say, uh, they, you know, have a reflection on their behavior and realize wh where we're right and where we're wrong. Okay. So um, we talked about the global reach. So this movement has really gone global, hasn't it? I mean, it is the world's largest protest, which we're saying again and again. What's happening in the States around this? So, okay, so let's, let's start from scratch. First off, um, because of who we are in our history, um, I think the Punjabi diaspora is one that is spread all over um, the world. Like we have, they say like Pakistan Punjab and India Punjab, but we also have a third Punjab. And like I was on a live uh, a few weeks back with someone that, that kind of um, introduced me to this concept. There's a third Punjab and that third Punjab is us the Punjabis in the diaspora and we've been very vocal about it each you know um each country the diaspora has been trying to do something um we had a great example in the UK where there was a parliamentary debate on it you know we've had a lot of MPs and a lot of support coming from Canada Trudeau has actually spoken on it I'm not trying to take side like I'm, I'm not partial on yeah, any yeah. parties like yeah. I, yeah. I do not support Trudeau in any way I'm just saying um, in the United States, like, yes, like I got my congressman to speak. I got, you know, the Tom Lanto's Human Rights Commission to speak because he chairs it. But on a federal level, the response hasn't been there. Um, and for the longest time, we couldn't understand why, because everybody was calling their congressman. Like when this started, um, I kind of jumped on a successful bandwagon of a, of a few girls from California who were like, which was the call your congressman campaign. Let's get something done in Congress. Get a resolution. Like the, the goal was always to get a resolution passed in Congress. And I was like, okay, let's do this. And, um, you know, I had my Gurdwara send out emails to everyone like, hey, you know, call your congressman. There's three Gurdwaras in Massachusetts. I had them do that. I contacted people that I knew in other states, whether it was, um, uh, like Vermont, New York, people on the East Coast, like, hey, you know, tell the Gurdwaras to, you know, email the Sangat to call their congressman. Okay. Um, at this point, I was not aware that there was a quote unquote Sikh caucus, right? At this point. So I'm like, when I got involved in this, my, my education on what was going on, like, I had no idea. Like, I was very illiterate. I was very illiterate on Hindu Tava and RSS influence. <laughs> I was very illiterate on the amount of influence that India actually has in other countries' governments. Like we're well aware of the, um, in the UK with Preeti Patel and what's going on with Jaggi Joel, but people are not that aware in the United States. Okay, so, you know, it's a bunch of us girls and, you know, we're, we're just doing this. And like, you know, we have um, a lot of Sikh organizations supporting us. Like, it's not like, you know, like we didn't have backup, like we did. And, um, you know, so, okay. So what ended up happening was that um, there was a live with a few congressmen. I want to say it was Congressman Valdeo and Congressman um, Garamendi. Um, and they were on a live Facebook kind of seminar webinar about Sakka Nankana. And, and, and so to the, to the naked eye, to the naked ears, it seems very innocent. I was like, okay, like, why is this an issue? But everybody made it an issue. And I was like, and I think I just gotten off a live with somebody else. So I missed the actual live, but like everybody was like, go back and watch it. So when you go back and watch, like I, the, some, you can see the comment, the pre-recorded comments already coming up. And everybody was like, in that live, say no deep core, say Ranjit Singh, you know, say deep Sidhu, say this, like talk about the farmer's protest. And at that time I thought like, Oh, you know, like in my mind, like I still thought it was very innocent. I was like, okay, this was about Sakka Narkana. Like maybe they didn't want to bring anything up. Maybe the congressman had said this because 
um, even when I was trying to get a meeting with my congressman, it was very, um, it was very structured. Like you have to tell them exactly what you're talking about. Even when I went on a live with Claudia Webb and um, Nadia Whit Whittem, like it was um, like, you had to tell them exactly what you were talking about. And when you have politicians coming on, yeah, they want to be very careful about what they're saying. So I knew that in, in my head, I didn't think much of it. I had a mutual friend who worked a lot with Congressman Valdeo's office. So I was like, okay, like people are upset about this. So why don't I just get him on a live with me and we can talk about what happened, why, you know, the farmers protest wasn't mentioned on this live. And this was a live with the Sea Caucus, which is now turned into a, to a huge thing. Monica, sorry, just because there are people listening that don't know what a Sea Caucus is. Can you okay. just explain very simply for people that don't know, because we don't have those here. Okay. So in the, <clears throat> so the, the United States, so there's three branches of government for the United States. There's the executive branch, which is the president and his cabinet. There's a judicial branch, which is the Supreme Court. And there's a legislative branch, which is both houses of Congress, which is the Senate and the House of Representatives. Now, both the House of, uh, the House of Representatives and the Senate has uh, caucuses, which is people with, that support a certain cause, they congregate together. So when they wanna push resolutions or laws or legislation that support those issues, they come together and they can push it out. Like, so we, uh, have, we have lobby groups here. Yeah, so that's basically, that's, yeah. that's basically what it is. But like, for instance, I would be a lobbyist because I am lobbying congressmen to speak on the farmers issue, right? But a caucus is actual congressmen or senators. So each house has separate ones. In the House of Representatives, we have a seat caucus. Um, and the seat caucus's job is to push out legislation, resolutions, and, and fight for things that benefit the seat community. Um, particularly the Sikh American community. There's also an Indian caucus. There's also an Armenian caucus. There's also a climate change caucus. And the interests of those caucuses are based off of that. So um, I forgot where I was. So you approached them. Yeah, okay. So um, through, through a mutual friend, I, um, I approached their office and I was like, hey, can, would, would this person, would, uh, Representative Valdeo like to go on live because he was one of the founding members of the Sea Caucus and um, there there was a lot of support for for Valdeo and there still is because he's also a farmer. Um, he seems pretty genuinely invested. Like he was someone who like when corporate farming came into America, he was one of the people whose farms like went under. So he understands the background really well. So I was like, like it would be great. And at this point, I was still thinking everything was innocent. Okay, so they were like, yeah, like we would love to come on. Why don't you send, you know, like when are you available, this and that. So we were talking dates and times. And I was like, okay, so let me send you questions because I knew that was a process in which I said, like, let me send you discussion topics. Let's like figure out what we want to talk about and what we don't. And then let's move forward. So I sent him questions like talking about the 1984 Sikh genocide, talking about the farmers' protest and human rights violations. I actually, you know, I brought up the topic of Khalistan and how, you know, India didn't want the Sikh caucus made because they said that it was a pro Khalistani group that was doing it. So I brought I brought up all these questions. And um, when I sent the questions, it was dead silence. There was no response from their their side. And I thought it was weird because I had I had said, like, if you're not OK with any of the questions, like I can change them like. Like at this point, like I wasn't asking these questions to turn someone off like like those were like general issues that pertain to the Sikh diaspora, right? Like, like the term Khalistan, instead of being this ideology that, you know, um, it, it was, it has been used to make us look bad. So I, I actually didn't think that someone would take any of these conversation points um, as negative. So, okay, so no response. And then I thought that, like, in my head, that that was that struck something like why was it that this person totally went radio silent when I said that okay then I started doing my research and I started asking questions I started asking questions to anybody that would talk to me and I'm like like, like what's going on this and that I actually did a lot of research um and by this time my reading and understanding of RSS and Hindutava um like had increased a lot um this was this was I want to say already February so by this time I I had a grasp on what was going on so 
then I um, started understanding how powerful the Indian caucus actually is. More than half of the House of Representatives is a member of the Sikh caucus. And um, I got the name of the guy who started, Pavone Malone. There's a congressman who started the India caucus who actually got a, like a really high award from the Indian government. And the primary purpose of the Indian caucus was to make sure that the United States government does not say or understand or do anything that may make India look bad. That is their primary purpose. And it's a powerful caucus. Like whenever there's a legislation or any type of ruling, like they lobby other congressmen. They don't let anything get passed, which would be against India. They don't let anything happen. They like that. Like it's powerful. They've got a hold in there, right? A very, like it's the largest and strongest caucus in, in the House of Representatives. Wow. Then in, on the seat caucus, more than, more than half are members of the India caucus. So, I mean, that's weird, right? Like, like, is that not weird? Like you would want, I'm not saying that I'm anti-India, like I love India, but I'm anti-Indian government, right? There's and a difference. injustices, yeah. Well, yeah, injustices and human rights violation, which our community has been a victim of, of for years, like since, be, like since before 47, since the British. Um, so by default, that makes the Sikh caucus, like right before anything else, like just that understanding that, okay, the India caucus is the most powerful caucus in Congress. We have more than half the members of the Sikh caucus are from the, are also members of the India caucus. Like immediately, um, that, that was an, that was an issue. Like in my head, I was like, oh, like, okay, this is, this is a red flag. Um, so when I initially, I made a tweet thread. And initially when I made the tweet thread, I didn't name any names. Um, I didn't talk about anything else because I, I spoke from my initial understanding, which was we have an Armenian caucus. In 2019, the Armenian caucus got the United States government to understand um, the 1984, uh, sorry, the Armenian caucus got the United the States genocide. government to, yeah. to recognize the Armenian genocide. And we're still lingering on the 1984 Sikh genocide and where this is not happening because when the Sikh caucus was formed, it was said that they will not discuss any issues that are outside America. So they actually said that. They've yeah, like, that. like that, that, that's a rule. And, and when, when the Sikh caucus was formed, it was formed because of 9-11, right? Because of what was going on with 9-11. So, I mean, at that moment, the biggest issue, like the, so to, to to be unbiased, like at that time, what was needed was congressional action to make sure that Sikhs in America were protected, right? When 9-11 was going on, because we had, um, my God, I can't think of the name. Oh, almost immediately, like we had, we had a gentleman that was shot. I want to say his name was Babir Sordi, but um, for some reason I can't think of the name, but like we, we, were, we had instances, right? Mm -hmm. So, so there was action needed at the federal level to protect Sikhs, right? So I think it, it I, you know, it, it, it could be, I don't know, like, when Bilbeed I want to- Bilbeed Singh, somebody Bilbeed. just said it's Bilbeed Singh, yeah. Yeah, um, so I don't know when 9-11 happened in the years, like in, in my head, I'm like, you know, was like, like if, if you're trying to justify why someone would say that, yes, we're only gonna focus on domestic issues and not international issues, like I'm trying to justify what that reasoning would be because the bottom line is, and like anyone that's watching this that has grandparents or youth, the 1984 Sikh genocide and its aftermath are huge within the Sikh community, right? Those are, that is one of the most traumatic experiences. I mean, after 47, that is by far the most traumatic experiences that has happened to our community. Why would that not be something to discuss? Like, why would you, like, if you are in a leadership position for our community, why would you not want that discussed? Why would you not want that recognized, right? Like, like if you consider a relationship, right? If something's bothering you and your husband doesn't recognize it, it's like salt on the wound. But if you're, even if your husband's like, I recognize it, I apologize, but I can't do anything about it. That's still like, it's, it's, it's still a medicine for it, right? It's an acknowledgement of, it, of your suffering, yeah. Yeah, so like, I mean, obviously I will never know what my grandmother and my grandfather went through or what my dad went through. I will never know it. I will never acknowledge it. But one thing I can see and understand is the pain, right? So when everybody was 
when when people when the delete jello happened in november it was during thanksgiving and as people were moving from punjab into haryana not just me like i was talking to some of my cousins as well um like my grandma's siblings kids and like like all grandparents had the same reaction like they were traumatized they were traumatized and it really 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 makes me angry that that people were just that we have people in powerful positions or people with so much access that were just sitting on their hands well they've been put there for that reason haven't they to yes. to to dumb it down so i i i completely completely empathize with that point that it what was happening with ariana when they're moving forward in in october november time it resonated and we were in our teens when 84 happened but it was bringing back those memories of waiting to hear what was going on and seeing youngsters on the front line thinking are they going to get shot you know and then our reactions are to that you know we we we're, we're having that emotional turmoil and our reactions are such and we're immediately thinking oh my god something's going to kick off now something's going to happen and we we you know we have that level of paranoia i suppose for want of a better word we're thinking mm. something awful's going to happen now so i can mm. completely understand that so this seek caucus which is not mm. really seek by principle by the sounds of it so they it sounds like they've been established to control the narrative to no they've been no? they've been developed to throw sand in our eyes so the purpose is to be like to to curb political ambition right so what what happens if you look at the african american community right um the way they are gaining equality is by uh, by getting more people into congress into office in, in into into decision making spots right so what ends up happening is that if so if when people so having a caucus is a very very um it's a prominent place to be so what essentially happened is they threw sand in people's eyes like hey you don't have to worry about anything you have a caucus taking care of you right it wasn't they are controlling con they are controlling the messages that are going to the center of government right yes 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 so the same here we have the same situation here yeah we 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 have we don't have caucuses and such but we have we're very divided we have groups that link with certain political parties and their narrative is portrayed as the seek narrative and they don't talk about the things that we need to talk about the things that are important to our community so and i don't know whether you followed it from the start but when um one of our mp's is very vocal is tandesi we have two seek mp's that are very vocal we have reacher girl and i think you've been on a panel with her previously she's fantastic mm -hmm. and we have tandesi and tandesi raised the question in parliament and our prime minister had no idea what was going on and his response was what happens between pakistan and india is an internal matter yeah but tan because there is protocol tan desi couldn't challenge him further mm -hmm. but the narrative like you say from the people that have been put in by the indian government and the rss they have they have fed that narrative to them that this is nothing for you to worry about this is a human rights violation these are khalistanis these are separatists but you know monica if we if we look across india if we talk to people from the different states they've all suffered they've all suffered last week i was talking to um nordeep and some of the things that she said were really painful to listen to mm -hmm. i was listening yeah yeah uh, yeah so that was really painful listening and then if you go to gujarat and you see what modi and his regime have done in gujarat you know if you listen mm -hmm. to them and did you see what happened in bangladesh today where they yeah. quiet it because they don't want modi because they hate him so much so um um so if here's the thing um what rss and hindutva what they're doing is they're they're so hinduism is not one religion it's multiple sects that they've come under this umbrella term and if it wasn't for the minorities and them rallying against a common enemy hindus would fight amongst themselves because the common thread would be no my god is superior no my god is superior no ram is superior no krishna is superior so what has happened is that um rss hindutva ideology has has kind of created this no we are all one and we have to work against 
these people. That's initially what's actually what's happening. And people don't realize it because like, because I lived in India, right? Bombay worships um, Ganeshji. And then in, in Northern India, you have um, Ram. And then in Gujarat, they worship Krishna. Gujaratis worship Krishna. And then South India, I know it's like, it's, 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 I want to say Durgama. So like, there, there isn't this one cohesive kind of um, ideology or religion that unites them like, like there is in the Sikh diaspora. And I think, I, I, I mean, there's no proof of this. This is just my theory that what has happened is the government has for years understood this. And um, this stems from Gandhiism. Um, he, it, their philosophy was that if we do not unite against a common enemy, um, we will fight amongst ourselves. Is, is basically it. And then they do, you know, the caste. So you, first you've got the Hindu Hinduism, then you've got the caste mm -hmm. and, you know, within, within that faith, there are people being, I mean, so even now we're talking, some of the comments that are coming up are absolutely vile. And you just think, are you oh. really that sad a human being? You know, you just really, uh, have you, you're very vocal. So do you get any abuse? Um, I mean, I get it. I get a lot of abuse, but like, I don't like, from, I, I have not been reading the comments. Like, my attention doesn't go there. Um, I'm very quick. Like, for instance, if I know it's a bot, I'm very quick to delete and block. Um, if it's someone from within our own community, like, and if they, they are talking properly, like, I'm very happy to engage in dialogue. Um, but, like, I'm, I'm not bothered. Like, it, it, I'm so confident in my head and in my heart about what I'm standing for, then nothing anybody says can, can push me or can, can trigger me in any way. Um, and, I, and I think, that, I think that, that's what people don't understand because all of us, all of us within the Sikh diaspora, the Punjabi diaspora are so like, we, we believe that we are on the right side. That's why none of this um, is, is affecting us. Like, I mean, I'm sure you're not affected by the comments. I'm not affected by the comments. Nobody, nobody has been affected by these BJP bots or their IT cell. And that's why they've been rendered useless. Like if you see my Twitter and my Instagram now, you will never find the BJP IT cell there because for, for a while, like I was just deleting them. Then, and then as my credibility grew, people would attack them. Like, you know, people were like, no, like yeah. lay off of her. So yeah, like yeah. they, they all yeah. like went away. What astonishes me is how low they can go. So, uh, you, you know, Ritu, right? I was speaking to her a couple of weeks ago and Dr. Ritu, and she was telling me some of the emails that she's got where people have attacked every single bit of her body. And you just think, it says more about you, you know, yeah. about the, than the person that you're attacking, that you have to be so low. And, 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 and anybody that can defend what's going on at the moment in India, there's got to be something wrong with them. I just think, you know, there is no way. And you can never be paid enough to come out with some of the rubbish that these people come out with. Whatever it is, they get 10 rebay a tweet or whatever rubbish. But um, the purpose yeah, is so just it's a trigger. Just, it's, yeah, yeah. So it's not just about, I, I, I personally, I, do, I don't think it's about, I mean, we obviously have our Sikhish issues related to our families and like you say, the things that resonate with us, you know, going back to 84 and even 47 and, and, and just the general state of Punjab and, you know, and the lack of opportunity and everything that we know that exists in Punjab. But it's a human rights violation across faiths, across states, across mm -hmm. India. Mm -hmm. So even on that front, if it's not, you know, okay, the Sikh caucus is, is dumbing down the, the calls for, for justice and what have you, but even on the point of human rights, the, the, the government's not listening in the USA. I mean, so, here they're starting to wake up a little bit and think mm, there's something in this, right? So individual congressmen have, but they're, they're, the, the problem is the India, Indian caucus is so um, large and so powerful within Congress that their, their primary job is to make sure that nobody comments on human rights violations. So when McGovern tweeted and when the Tom Landers Human Rights Commission tweeted, they were attacked. They were attacked by everyone. And what happens is that um, the people who run the, um, the Indian caucus, they, they lobby, they lobby other congressmen to stay silent. 
Um, it's a it's a huge problem because besides McGovern, I haven't been able to get anyone else from Massachusetts to speak. And I'm on this. Like, I'm not working right now. Like, I'm on this 24-7. Like, literally, besides... And it's not me. It's, like, me, my sister, my I have puppies that live here. Like, like, it's... Like, we're on it. Like, we are calling the other like there's not there's nine total congress of so mcgarvin spoke there's eight other people like like we're not leaving people alone and we're a full-time we operation yeah and, and <laughs> we haven't been able to do it um so i mean there's something there's something really fishy going on but here's the thing india is very pro c caucus and india is very anti like Peter Frederick and whoever Peter Frederick associates with and like Kalsa aid. And then like, um, they're very anti poetic justice. So my, like now I've realized that if India is against certain people, then I'm for them. Like that, that's what I've gotten. And if anybody needs to like fact check or, or think twice about it, like they're stupid. <laughs> it's a sign of credibility, isn't it? It was when yeah. the NIA were calling people, we were watching for who's not being called because <laughs> <laughs> then they're, they're not genuine right yeah so it's absolutely. almost like people were sitting there going please call me please call me because that's like a badge of credibility <laughs> exactly <laughs> so exactly. what how is there work going on i know you've spoken to our director over in america omar yeah but is, is there work going on to um yeah get get more like-minded people th in through the caucuses or what what are there people coming up are they are are people even engaging with them so i mean the biggest thing that has happened um through this morcha is me waking up like i never i never once living in america living the life i live and i live a life of a lot of privilege like god has blessed my family like so much so I never once thought that I'd be in a position where like, I'd have to look at the people I love and think what now. And although like, yeah, nothing has changed in the way we live or, you know, how we eat, but like, um, because of how emotionally affected the people I loved were like, it woke me up like, Hey, Monica, like, there's more to your life than just posting pretty pictures on Instagram, right? Like, you, you need to have a little bit more of an impact than you have had. Um, so, I mean, I don't know for how long, like I've chosen to, to now work in, um, human rights and, and social justice, um, long-term and we'll see how that goes. Me and like a few people that I've been working with and associating with, like we have created, um, a long-term agenda of like getting more Sikh people into office, people who are pro fund and are not gonna, you know, pull a dogra like uh action on us like that has happened um you know that that's a long-term plan so what what india and these rss people have done they what they did was a very long-term scheme right creating an india caucus slowly growing it you know over the years until it's powerful so that's what we have to do um i think the mistake that happened was that during peacetime our civil rights organization our people calmed down you know, like if countries stopped developing weapons during peacetime, then they'd be screwed when wartime came. Like they're constantly developing, you know, more powerful weapons, more powerful weaponry and growing. And we for too long have been pushing our kids. Oh, you got to be a doctor. Oh, you got to be a, law a lawyer or be a dentist, this and that. And like, like, it's ridiculous. Like, no, like, you, you know, you teach them like we're a minority community. And I know people don't like that because like some crazy people were like, no, we are a community of warriors and we're going to fight. Yeah, fight. Fight smart. Like, but we are a community of, of we, we are a minority community. And if we do not stand united, we will fall. We have to work together. We have to put each other first. We have, like, until, like, people, like, the only way that, like, we can move forward without having to um, actually care is, like, if, like, couples start having, like, six, seven kids apiece, you know, that's the only way we're not going to ever be a minority. And obviously that's not going to happen. Um, but because we're a minority, we don't have the privilege of being silent. Like, especially those of us in the diaspora, like we are absolutely safe. Why are we not talking? Like, I don't understand why, like, I mean, like I have family members 
like extended family members that haven't done Jack or haven't said Jack or haven't posted it. And I can, I cannot understand why, like, what do you have to lose? Yep. Yeah, somebody sitting in India working for, you know, a corporate sector in India has their job to worry about, has their loved ones to worry about, have people to worry about. What do we have to lose? Like, what do, like, what does anybody watching this, anybody following me, anything, what do you have to lose? Like, are you going to lose your job? No. If anything, what gets like me, what gets me is that we have people that will hashtag BLM. Yeah. If there is a human rights violation going on somewhere, you know, in an Arab country or something, they're all up in arms and, oh, this is terrible. And their profile pictures change and all the rest of it. When it's your own people, the people that you, you, you are your roots that are being persecuted so badly and so blatantly, you fail to even read up about what's going on. And when I talk to people and they love the Punjabi music, they love the Punjabi culture and they're bali bali. And when you talk to them and say, do you know what's going on? Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Why isn't anyone talking about it? Who you think? Wake up, right? Um, so there's a lot of people following me. Um, mm, yeah, who, who, who have stayed silent. Um, but they sure as hell know what's going on. They've chosen to stay silent. And that's a choice that I will remember forever. That's a choice that like when it comes down to like who I will be associating with, who I will um, be choosing to like, you know, let my kids play with in the future. Like I will remember, I will remember forever that when we needed backup, who decided to keep their mouth shut? Like when Rihanna made it cool, like two or three people posted here and there. Other than that, like, it's a very different type of low if you can't stand with your community. It's 100%. a very different type of low. And um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Like, it, it, it's very frustrating. It angers me. And like, I wish, like, I wish I could say a lot of things. I wish I could do a lot of things, but I can't because, you know, like, my mom would probably yell at me, but like, <laughs> I, was <laughs> I was gonna ask you, I was gonna ask you. So uh, just coming back to that, so the complacency, our community, the complacency within us and this ambition to be doctors and lawyers, that's led us into this situation where somebody else is raising the voice for us, right? And it's the same here. It's absolutely the same here. So we're well behind. We're well behind the game, but we need to pick up. So my next question to you, and we've already been talking for 45 minutes, but as I'm talking to you, I can almost see inside your head, you've got all these things that you're trying to organize and rationalize, right? Because it, it, you, you're, you're learning a lot. I can see it. Um, and you've got the hunger to learn more by the sounds of it as well. So how are your parents? I mean, I'm 50 and my mum and dad have been like, and here there's... Um, you know, never mind what Ravi does, and Ravi's very vocal. So, but but all of a sudden, when I started saying, right, I've, I've got a voice and I'm going to use it, and they were like, nee, nee, asini kush kena, rende tu, rende tu, kati kena. My mum and dad are so scared, it's ridiculous. But here we have seen, like you said, Preeti Patel, we have seen um, them trying to deport people, trying to hold people accountable for what they're saying. And even raising a question of the way India is functioning right now is causing people issues. So you're young. Mm -hmm. You have a career in, the, in you know, you, some of your work is over in India, whether it's Bollywood or Punjab. So how, how are your parents and your immediate family and your agents and people that you work with, how are they responding to you being so vocal? So um, I was supposed to be getting married in 2020. So like I had dropped everything and moved back here. So COVID happened and this and that. My mom and dad, um, so the atmosphere in our family has always been that of activism. Um, and that stems from my grandma. My grandma is a little fireball. And um, uh, I, I kind of get it from her. Like she, she and her, all her siblings are like this because, and we, and you'll notice this in all of our grandparents. There's a quiet re resilience in them. They fight, they fight. They have this strong desire to survive. So in my household, um, with my, when it comes to my mom, she's like, just get married already. That's her, that's her only concern. With my dad, my dad's like, no, like, I'm proud of you. Like, go, do it, do it. Um, I have a sister. My sister's in law school. My brother's applying to colleges. Um, I mean, my dad, my dad has been 
like I, like he doesn't like the term activist, but he is like he's been a he's when nine eleven happened he he was an activist. He worked very closely with the FBI. He worked very closely with educating law enforcement in New England about um, who the Sikhs were and stuff. So activism does run in our family. Um, I think with them, they were just like, well, why don't you turn it into a career option? Why don't you work for this organization? Well, my dad was like, why don't you move to Washington, D.C. and start lobbying? Like, there, theirs was like, okay, like, like do something with it. Like, you have this passion, do something. Like they, and they were like the same way with my app modeling and acting because when I started modeling it was like I was just doing it for like local photographers my dad helped me like get it off the ground so they're my family is not like other families where they're like you have to follow this one route it, they're more of like you know you do what you want to do um there's a lot of trust that whatever we do like it'll be it'll be right I'm a, but overall like we're very pampered children our parents like take care of us our grandparents take care of us in, in our family like there isn't like how dare you do this you're in trouble now like it's like okay you did this but what what was your like why were you doing this what were you thinking is something bothering you did something trigger you like there's a lot of emotional intelligence within my dad and grandma um even my mom so th there's no like in Indian families, what ends up happening is because of the traumas that have been passed down for generations, those ultimately translate into how children are raised, right? This kind of um, mechanism of survival or this need to survive, that's the instinct that is passed into, our, into children. And that's not how it, I was raised or how my family was raised. Is there trauma? Yes. But my grandmother worked very hard not to instill the trauma into her children. Therefore, my parents didn't instill it into me. So when we work or when we do something, it's coming from a place of security, right? What I'm doing, if I was, if I was coming or talking from trauma, I would not be doing what I'm doing. I'm doing what I'm doing is because I feel very secure within myself, within my voice, where I am in my house. You know, I feel very well taken care of. So my parents are just like, my mom's like, get married. My dad is really just like, do what you got to do. I'll support you. Like, just don't screw up is basically what it is. Do what you're doing to the best you can. Yeah. yeah. I am um, a, a couple of months ago, I did a discussion, I held a discussion with um, Sorch Mental Health from Toronto. It was two young ladies, mental health nurses that are doing a lot of community work. And they were talking about intergenerational trauma. And that was the first time I'd heard that. And then I started thinking and I reflected back and I got it. I, you know, like you, you've just uh, dis said, I got it. I could see how that fear has been instilled and the trauma, it, it has gone through generations, whether we talk about it or not. And I think sometimes when people are scared to speak and they're not so vocal, it's probably some of that as well, where they've been conditioned not to speak for fear of what might happen. And if you go back into their history, sometimes there's been a terrible loss and, you know, so um, it's, I'm glad you brought that up because I want to, I want to talk about this. Um, okay. Um, for instance, this whole Gandhiism thing, Gandhiism was a soft power by the Indian government that they used to gain kind of international recognition of being like a peaceful country, great, da, da, da. In the same way, um, the Brits use skin color. During colonial time, one of their soft power was having light skin and they, they kind of conditioned people to think that light skin was, was pretty, right? And then and what ended up translating to this is that anyone who had darker skin considered them inferior to anyone who had light skin. So that, that's also a trauma, right? In, in, in inferiority complex is a trauma that is taught to you. Inferiority is taught. Um, and then that be feeling inferiority to white people that has transcended within generations. Hundred percent, hundred percent. We see that a lot here. We see that so, a lot. So, I mean, and and th this was taught like okay. So when I so I, I was born in the U.S. but I grew up in India and like both my sister and like my grandmother would do all sorts of gizmos and gadgets. Like she would bathe us in milk and like rub bikini into us because she thought it was going to keep our skin <laughs> white. Like to this day, she was like like she'll she'll make us like. It's gross. I know it's gross, but she'll still make us maldehi into our skin. Like I went to Mexico with my fiance like a, like a couple of years ago and I came back with a tan 
And she was like, like, what did you just do? And like, she had me like sit in my mom's bathtub and she was rubbing dahi in it because that, con that conditioning is there, right? Now, um, what we need to talk about though is um, what this inferiority complex has done, right? What happened? So we had this great, we had a great few years when we had the, you know, the Sikh empire, great. You know, we were feeling good. There was, there was confidence there. Everybody was feeling good about themselves. There was your, our identity was accepted. What happened? The British came and in order to destroy that identity, to, to destroy that confidence, that destroy that we are somebody, um, they, they instilled inferiority. And what, who did they instill inferiority into? Men, right? They made the men feel bad. So who did the men take it out on? Their spouses. They went home and abused their wives. They're in the, and the wives didn't have enough sense to speak out or understand what, what a healthy relationship is. Therefore, this whole ideology of stay quiet, take whatever happens in a relationship, don't bring it out, that stem from it. We, or we already talked about colorism. Now, the trauma of if we speak out, we will get shot. What happened? Jallianwala Bagh, right? Like, what did Jallianwala Bagh do? It was a way to say, you speak out, we will kill you. Um, there was something I recently learned about Sakta Nakoda, right? Mm -hmm. Like people were talking about Bayad be done to the Guru Granth Sahib. What happened? They were shot. How does this, now that generation, that generation had kids. They taught their kids, don't say this. Otherwise you won't survive. We want you to be safe. Don't say anything. Go to school, come back home. Then they taught it to their kids who then taught it to their kids. And and I I, I do have to give a lot of credit to people are fighting this. Like now we have therapists, we have all this. So we have ways to work through this. But back in the day, it was only if a, if a mother decided that no, this is not how I'm raising my kids. Like I'm raising my kids to have a voice. Would they have a voice? You know, I, um, think, I think it's only now that we've started talking about that. And we've got some insight into these issues. I think our previous generations have just got on with it because they're constantly trying to find their feet and find stability and they're probably glad if we get through a generation without any any sort of genocide or any yeah any trauma okay we're going into an hour which is huge <laughs> i think we're gonna have to reconvene let's see how your work with the um, caucuses goes but was there anything more you wanted to add because it's been fantastic i can listen to you for hours <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, and no, I think it's great. I was so excited to come here and talk to you. I know my sister was very excited. She, she follows Ravi uncle. So, um, she's, she's like a huge fan and she, um, I think, is it Sonica? Yeah. No, she's been saying hello on the comments. Yeah. So my, my sister was so excited. Um, oh, bless her. yeah, she, my sister's more of an activist than I am. She's like wanting to get into government. She's, she's a second year law student at BU. So, for her, like she understands concepts that I barely can. Like she talks a lot about neoliberalism and the WTO and how the WTO in Canada and US have had a huge influence on um, on getting these laws passed. Like there's there's a lot of issues that we could get into, um, but we don't have that time. So perhaps perhaps we need to have both of you on. Yeah, she's a lot smarter than I am, so I think she would. <laughs> I'm sure she'll be very pleased to hear that. <laughs> yeah, she's watching. Oh, so. You know, I've had the most amazing comments. People are saying I could listen to you for hours, more power. So I think we're going to have to wrap it up. But I, th I think let's maybe do another one in a couple of weeks. But honestly, honestly, hats off to you. You're doing absolutely amazing. And for me personally, seeing people like you being role models to people of my daughter's generation, I couldn't ask for more. So what you are doing is priceless on so many ways. I know you're on a journey and you're learning and your, your passion and enthusiasm is, is it, it can't be bought and it can't be faked. Like I said, so you're doing fantastic work and anything at all we can do. You're in touch with our um, USA team. We're with you. We support you guys, but extra time. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to have a break. It's been an hour. I can't talk for that long. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let, let's reconvene, I think, and then talk about, maybe people can tell us what they want us to talk about and then we can go from there. And let's Absolutely. get Sonica, Sonica on as well. But yeah, I mean, I can't say it enough. Total respect to you and well done and just 
keep 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 educating people and i'm sure people have learned so much from today listening to you thank but you this so is what much we need. we need more thank you thank you so much you have a great rest of the day all right guys it was so nice to to, to have you guys here thank you for listening to us thank you Angie, for having me i had a blast <laughs> we'll do it again soon thank Absolutely. you bye bye bye